Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. So it's a lot lower elevation. All this uh, habitat here is going to be underwater. My dream is to be successful enough that all I will have to do is to spend my time fishing and teaching fish. The more access the public has to these kind of natural spaces, the more they're aware of their impact on them. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. Rosario Martinez, a senior project manager with the Coastal Bend Bays and Estuaries program. We are here in Nueces Bay. Historically, Nueces Bay has supported various numbers of colonial water birds. Egrets, spoonbills, herons, but the populations have been on the decline. And that's attributed to the fact that the uh, Rickery Islands, which are important nesting habitat, has been um, eroding away. The island has seen its better days. It's a lot smaller now due to wind and currents and periodic storm events and sea level rise. I'm seeing some terns, some skimmers on their nests. If they don't have suitable habitat, they come over here along the, the banks of the, of the river. So it's a lot lower elevation, so they're going to be prone to flooding events and they're not as protected as they would be on the, on the islands in, in the bay. Whenever there's a storm coming in, like we are in hurricane season, all this uh, habitat here is gonna be underwater. So all these chicks in the nests are not gonna survive. Um, also another threat that they have here that they wouldn't have on the islands as, as much as uh, predation. So a coyote could come in here or a raccoon and just decimate the entire population as well. To A99. We have been documenting 106.0. The decline of the nesting colonial water birds here in Oasis Bay. At one point, it supported over 10,000 nesting pairs. And now it's down to 1,000. So we have to protect the nesting habitat that we have now and expand it and make it more productive. Looking at one of the islands that we are going to restore, we've uh, acquired some funding to, to come back and put rock. The construction is happening as we speak. It's very exciting. Um, they're putting in the fill material. The cranes are out there spreading it around, uh, raising the elevation of the island. They've already placed all the rock. Wrap this up tomorrow and then we'll move to Island 5 and that'll take about a week. Okay, well it's looking really good. Just a little sandbar is what it started out, most of them. Some had a little bit of vegetation, but not very much, of course. Um, we've expanded the footprint of the island probably anywhere from 20 to 40 times what it was. The immediate results, you don't have to wait for them. Yeah, <laughs> it does feel really good, especially when you, before we even finish the island, the birds are trying to occupy. <laughs> You know, they, they immediately inhabit the island once we're done, and um, very rewarding to see all that. It was barely above sea level, so, so now we have a good almost four feet above sea level, which is great. Whenever storm events come, it's not going to be underwater. 
It's still going to provide protection for these birds. So it's great satisfaction to be able to see it expand and just more protection for this great habitat. When I was graduating from high school, there was a local artist from our hometown asked me, said, what is your dream? I said, my dream is to be successful enough that all I will have to do is to spend my time fishing and teaching fishing. So he painted this picture of, of me and I'm standing in the water and I'm fishing. Most of the decisions that I was, have made that were good decisions were usually made in the boat. Skip ahead many, many years. I did go to school to become a teacher, and I find myself as a discipline alternative director for a local school district. And I have kids that are coming to me, being kicked out of school, and are coming to me, and they're good kids. And the common thread that I found through all of that was that they did not have active parental engagement in their lives. The time where you had two parents spending time with their children seems to have dissipated over the last 20 or 30 years. So I thought, what can I do to bring these families together? Look, Lisa caught a fish. <laughs> I want something that I can teach the parents how to spend time with their kids. So I thought, I'll use fishing. Welcome folks, everybody. Thank you for turning out today. I'm Shane Wilson. I started Fishing's Future in 2007. It's a volunteer organization. And it was simply, a, you know, it's not to teach fishing. That's, the, that's the, the icing on the cake. My whole foundation and philosophy was to teach the parents how to spend time with their children outdoors. Well, Shane and Fishing's Future has just been transformational when we think about, you know, getting people and particularly families into the out of doors. With their nearly 30 chapters around the state, they've touched over a million people to introduce them into the joys of fishing and ultimately that becomes a portal into the great outdoors. melding families together through the tight knot, if you will, of fishing, it's, it's brilliant. Teaching kids that skill will, will, will help them throughout their lives. There's so many different avenues that all connect, and really it just starts with a fishing pole. It's making a huge difference for forever. It's everlasting differences. I mean, we have the opportunity to teach the kids and their parents together. Everything that, that Fishing Future teaches it goes into the family, into their everyday lives. Now watch this. Bring him in, bring him in. You got it. And thanks to, to Shane, there are so many families that are better off, and fishing is better off, and we're so lucky to have him. Shane is my hero. I mean, he is many people's hero, actually, in the sense that he started something from just an idea and a passion, and he went with it, and it is changing lives every day. It's changing lives forever. It's changing our environment. It's saving our world. I mean, he just has this passion. Anything that Shane is involved in, people want to join him. They want to help, and so we're incredibly fortunate to have Shane out there, out front, helping to introduce families to this wonderful sport of fishing and ultimately the outdoors. And that energy and that passion, um, it is uh, uh, infectious. And, and he's able to use that uh, to his advantage and to continue his message. He is you, he's me, he is the epitome of what happens when the average person cares.
what's up? It's early summer, and these University of Texas students are preparing for a trip. Is it open? I think so. We've got 12 students and our professor. The group is heading from Austin to the coast. We're heading down to Galveston Island State Park. But not for a break on the beach. Today we're uh, packing out for the first site visit. These advanced architecture students are heading to Galveston to design and build. Toodaloo. All anyone can say for sure is that by the end of this summer, a lot will be learned. This is a project we have to do in a very short time. 10 weeks from the first day to the last day. It will be an interesting summer for these students. If they are successful, the end result will be a finished structure that the state park needs. Welcome to Galveston Island State Park. Super excited that you're here. I'm a park interpreter. Essentially, I try to connect people with the natural resources that we have. We are almost an island within an island, surrounded on all sides by development. Since Hurricane Ike in 2008, this park has operated with limited infrastructure until a redevelopment plan can be funded. As we get out here, you might notice some algae on the ground. You see the little bubbles? One pressing need is a pavilion for educational programs. So it's a nursery habitat for all the fish that we like. A structure to provide some of the only shade on the park's bayside. We have a lot of school groups that come out here. I have a lot of hurdles to get over in order to make them start to care about this place. To get them to some of those higher thoughts and higher concepts, yet to meet their basic needs. The students are concentrating on working closely with their stakeholder, the park rangers. This is the proposed site with an emphasis of orientation towards the water here. We're going to try to get an idea of what it is that they want, and uh, through that, they'll begin a design process. Hit that corner. Yeah. They'll be camping very close to where they're going to build. It gets them immersed in the climate that they're going to be working within. The uh, mission of the design lab is to try to increase ecological literacy, particularly the coastal environment. How many renders are there going to be? Four? Yeah. OK. That's much better. It's been like Santa's little workshop in here. What are you working on? A lot of cardboard, a lot of Elmer's glue. We spend a lot of time at Hobby Lobby. Sweet. We're getting a master's in architecture, but we're getting a PhD in craft supplies. We had a pretty long design process. Obviously designing something with a group of 11 people, it's, it's hard to come to consensus about things. We floundered for about a week there to try to really find something we could all get behind. Um, but that's great because that's how real world practice is and it also ensures that we have a really good, strong idea. Given that it's a shade pavilion, we can test if it really does provide shade. I can hit apply. And we can see that at 10 a.m., uh, we're getting dappled light through the structure. These early models are design studies that they were doing individually. They're all meaningful in that they lead to something. That one design uh, that they're actually now going to present. It was a little bit Frankenstein-y for a little while, but we've got something good here. I think it's. Uh, definitely come together as a, a collective idea. Okay. You know, everything we're doing now, we're trying to minimize long-term maintenance. Right. Things really get beaten up. We have milestones that we have to hit, and the big milestone of the first half of the semester was getting the design and presenting that to the folks at the park. That's the shoreline we're counting. I like your orientation. I think it's very good. So your prevailing breeze is coming from the water. The next milestone then is develop drawings and to get uh, the technical folks uh, with the Parks Division to approve that. When you walk around the corner, it all kind of opens up in front of you. I just think that's a great idea. We'll have about uh, two and a half to three weeks to actually put this thing together. So it's very fast track. Fabricating components. We've been getting a lot of welding practice and 
sweating a lot. <laughs> There's a team working solely on wood, a team working on mostly steel. So that allows us to work really quickly. Theoretically, we're supposed to start this, uh, this Friday. Making shade. Yeah, a few setbacks. Uh, we had our professor take a little spill earlier, but he's getting sutured up. So I think he'll be good in a couple days. I just hope he's all right. Cut, going this way. We're figuring out how to load a lot of wood without a leader right now. Probably got three or four tons of wood. Not a cool day. It's, I don't know what it is, 100, 103. Uh, you got it. Ay, ay, ay. Well, all right. We're kind of in limbo of like when we're actually going to have the clearance to begin building. One, two, three. Just have to go and check all the boxes, make sure everything's good to go. Found a way to get through all the procedural hurdles, and we're moving forward. You know, it's right down to the wire. On the day we started construction is the day we got our approval. So all's well that ends well is what I say. We lost a day on the front end, but for the most part, we are on track. A lot of dirt has been dug. Getting there. It was extremely hot the first couple days. I think it was record highs, but the human body is pretty resilient. <laughs> We've been doing great. Great attitudes all around. In that direction. Yeah. What's your suggestion? Our fearless leader is back on site. We couldn't be happier to have him. I had a, had a few stitches in my face, which set me back a few days. But uh, the truth is, this is such a good group. Uh, <laughs> they're totally independent. You have to essentially, in space, make a perfect square and determine perfect placements, which is surprisingly challenging to get it right, You know, especially if you don't do it every day. Measure 20 times, build once is kind of what we're going for. I think we all were really excited today when all the rocks went into the wall. We are all like, wow, it actually does what we wanted to do, which was pretty exciting. That's why the studio is so fantastic, because it bridges that gap between paper and real life. You doing okay? I think you're doing great. All right. Not to jinx anything, but it's been going really well. What's your time on those? I'm just curious. One? OK. We've had some sequencing things where we've had to kind of stop and, and pause and make sure we're not stepping on our own toes as we go. But uh, I would say it's been surprisingly smooth. This is our second to last cut. Okay. We've been getting a lot done despite the odds. And knock on wood, nothing else comes up. The weather's been our biggest hang-up, I think. Here comes the rain. Let's, uh, let's get some stuff put away. Working in August, it's both a gift and a curse. Probably lost a few hours to summer rains, but you build that into the schedule, knowing that's gonna happen this time of year. We have had nothing but a great relationship with Texas Parks and Wildlife. And this is our fifth project. We've done three projects, the Goose Island State Park down in the Rockport area, the fire circle uh, for the youth nature interpreter there, a birding platform uh, where the nature interpreter again uses that for her bay walks. We've done a project at Sea Rim, which is up at Port Arthur. It's a um, camping platform that's out in the wetlands that uh, the only way you get to it's kayaking. People can rent for the weekend. And it's also used by biologists, bird counters to keep tabs on the health of that particular wetland. So all of these projects have something to do with the ocean environment, bay environment, where the public comes and learns something about the local ecology.
here we are, it's like 95, 100% humidity. And uh, we got the chain gang out here with rocks. They're just masochists. They just wanted to do it. I'd rather be moving rock than lifting louvers. Yeah, yes, those are probably 80 to 100 pounds depending on how soaking wet they are. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's almost there. It's been a very laborious undertaking, but we are on the tail end now. Just the finishing touches, the fun part, really. And repeat. It's tough to work in these conditions for 12 hours a day. When you can see the finish line, it's a lot easier. We're gonna finish, guys. I can't even describe the level of happiness that makes me feel. When they put up the first six louvers, we were like, oh my god. <laughs> we're standing on the deck and it's shaded. We did this. <laughs> One, two, three. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, let's drill it. We had some rough days in the beginning. We really were questioning whether we would even be here right now. It was, it was pretty tough. It's a heavy one. I'm really happy about the result, though. Because we're kind of wrapping it up, we're finally seeing what we've made come to life. I wish we could see the first group that's going to experience it. I'm pretty happy. I'll come back sometime, but I'll be happy to drive over the bridge headed back to Austin. I will not feel guilty if I lay in bed all day tomorrow. Last one. Oh. Amazing experience. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> We're excited to be wrapping up today for sure. I hope they're as satisfied with it as we are. Y'all ready? For us, it's a win, One, at least. Two, three. <laughs> Dig in the shade. Above and beyond. I love this crew. This is amazing. So, lessons learned? Do this in November. <laughs> This place, I think, is going to be highly used, and of course, I think the shade is going to be really appreciated in the future. Please consider this a personal invitation to come back and see how this place lives. There isn't like a ribbon cutting ceremony or anything. High five. Hey, go. Yes. Go. Good game. There will be some mild celebration and then some careful driving home because I think we'll all be very tired. Good game. Good game. Yeah. Wish you could spend more time with nature? Well, every month you can have the great outdoors delivered to you. Since 1942, Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine has been the outdoor magazine of Texas. Every issue is packed with outstanding photography and writing about the wild things and wild places of this great state. And now, Texas's best outdoor magazine is available as an app. It's just that easy. Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine, your connection to the great outdoors.